Kate Chacon. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I'm an artist, a muralist, and an illustrator. Um, can you share a little bit about um, how you came to know Self-Help Graphics? I first became acquainted with Self-Help Graphics in, in a working fashion when I did the mural that's um, out, out on the side of self-help graphics. There was this mural and that was that was a, um, an honor at the time. I've actually been familiar with self-help graphics and the work that they've done as a print institution um, and just a community hub for a lot of years. And But I feel like with that project, when I worked on it, it was really like coming into knowing the staff and the people in the community that they serve and also the ethics that they use to support artists. Um, and so we're, we're really happy to have you back. Um, you were with us last year uh, through all the craziness of COVID um, and again here, but um, can you share a little bit about the piece that you created for this year's Atelier? Yeah, this is the second print I created with Self-Help Graphics, and it is a very different process than what I did the last time. The last time was uh, cutting a lot of hand, hand done layers with Ruby Lit, and this one was very, very different. The, the print itself is a lot looser and kind of has this very painterly quality or sketch quality, drawn quality, and it's this building up of layers between them. And I like it because it has this looseness, but in the accumulation of layers um, on top of each other kind of starts to build up the depth and the richness of the image. And for me, this was really fun because it, it just feels, it feels like a painting, it feels like a drawing, um, but it also very much feels like a print as well. I think it holds the integrity of a print very well. And then it has this very subtle quality to it um, that I think brings you into the design and brings you into the mood of the piece overall. Do you want to share a little bit about the um, different imagery uh, used in it? I know you have it right behind you, but um, you know, do you want to speak to? Yeah, this piece, it's called Master Weaver. And it, <coughs> for, for us, for, I'm, I'm Dine, and the, the woman in the image is, is looking at a spider. And I, I like this idea of this humbling of like understanding the genius of somebody who's de dedicated their life to a practice. And I think for Dene, our traditional work is around weaving. And so many times, weavers are considered master weavers when they've done that same thing but to think about um also the other things around us that have dedicated to their life to a practice and to a practice of art can you talk a little bit about um you know what was the thought process behind the color palette um and you know that that highlighting of that blue tone yeah, um, I had started out actually working with a more saturated version of this drawing and it wasn't feeling intimate enough. It wasn't feeling um, like this quietness. It, it wasn't, I felt like it wasn't the right tempo for the piece and just kind of decided to go back to my original sketch, um, which was on some toned paper and really use that as the initial color palette for the work. Um, of course, all of these colors are hand mixed, so in the printing process, the color palettes changed a little bit, and I liked this kind of um, a little bit of a of a you know reverberation between warm grays and cool grays, and creating the depth between the two. So. It was really about one, making it look like it was like on this like hand done sketch paper or this toned sketch paper, but then being able to use all the different tones um, of gray to create the depths and build upon it. 
And so you, you mentioned, you know, that transition from the digital to the to the actual hand mixed paint um, and having to adjust those colors. Were there any other adjustments that you had to make around along the way or, you know, anything learned in the space? Um, no, this, this print was really different from the last one that I made, which I think was very tight um, and it had a lot of very tight layers. This one, on the on the contrary, has is very loose, very sketchy. Um, has a lot of gestures of the hand, and seeing the way that that the, that process um, works, I guess, in a printing method, was just really interesting. And it was interesting to see how forgiving it was in the printing process. Um, how it lended itself to, to I think I wanted to say like having a flow um, and seeing that the mis if if there was um, obvious mistakes, of course we see that, but the more subtle mistakes I feel like added to the print and they were harder to detect. Whereas when you have like very very tight layers um, and it's like you know you you become very zeroed in on every detail and making sure everything is lined up correctly. Um, this one felt a lot more like painting and like there was a lot more movement in it so I really enjoyed that aspect. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share about being back in the studio? No it's I mean I, I enjoy I enjoy working here. I've always enjoyed the printing process working with Dewey and Gabby are great. Um, I appreciate their skill and knowledge tremendously and also their ability to navigate all the different scenarios that they have with, with artists and I just think that that's such an incredible strength um, to be able to troubleshoot, give suggestions, um, be able to encourage and um, create something that's really beautiful together.